Hello everyone, how are you all doing? I hope you're all keeping well. Uh, remember to like my video, um, share my video, like my page, and follow my page on Facebook, on um, YouTube. Subscribe to my channel, like my video, and share my video. So we're going to be talking, before you start calling me out, you have to listen to this video. And also, if you have not listened to my um, video on um, parenting and teenagers, I'll put the link below so that you understand where I'm coming from. You see... Um, as our kids are growing up, as our daughters are growing up, I'm going to be talking about guys later, but let's talk about the daughters now. As our kids are growing up, there's what we call, you know, we, they're entering, the reason why I used, I said, I used, the, I said, I said with the, uh, with the age 16, they're entering that stage of puberty. That's what they're entering. And it happens to everybody. That's how God created each and every one of us. Once you turn, some people, it starts from 14, even some people as young as 12. And that's why I always say, be careful, be careful, moms. Watch your children, be close to your daughters. So what I'm saying is that when they get to 16, which is, that's when they want to start, you know, going on a date. So let's start with their prom, their prom, prom night. They are different, different, uh, different cultures in different countries all over the world. If I'm not mistaken, in America, on their prom night, normally, I think the guys normally come to pick up the, if I'm not mistaken, the girls from home. Well, but in Africa, I know it's not allowed. They're too young. In, in, in UK, in fact, even in UK, it's not allowed. We just watch them in movies and see them happening. So I'm not too sure how it works out there in America. But what I'm now saying is that when they turn six, when on their prom day, before we go to the prom, let's talk about, I, I might be going from here to here to here, but try and hear me out. How I'll be going from here, 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 here to here. I'm building a, I'm building something for you to understand. You see our, our children, you see how they are. Our daughters, just like you, when you were once young, you, as you were growing, your, you know, your, when you're hitting puberty, your body is, you know, your body is forming, your, your breast, you know, you know, girls, they, everything is developing and they are, their hormone is playing games with them. You know, they don't understand anything. And that is when, that is when you should be a lot. Ga, ga, ga. You should be, you should understand all their hormonal changes, everything happening to them. You should be there all the step of the way. You don't leave them. You never even leave them at all. If you listen to all my videos, you should be like two pieces apart. You should be very, very close to your daughters. Now let's see. Let us, let us, let us, before we talk about the, 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 the prom night that they normally go, let us talk about our daughters wanting to go on a date. You see, children are very, very smart. As you can imagine. Now let's talk about some children will come home and tell you, Oh mommy, I want to go out, I want to I want to have a drink with my friends. Listen, I want to have drinks with my friends. They didn't say one friend, they said friends. And you as a mother, your mind is oh friends, oh why not? You can go. You give her money, she goes. She told you friends. Even some parents will some parents will say in hindsight they'll say, What what are the names of your friends you're going out with? Even if it was they they've all they've all planned though maybe six of them she they'll call all six of them but in reality two of them when all six of them will meet two of them will go to one corner and go and continue but you as a parent you believe that all six of them have gone but now let us look at the other case where a child tells you so let me establish two things there's a difference between going on a date and dating and that's why i said a teenage daughter should be allowed to go on a date and you as a parent should be the one to take them on that date Pack your car in front of the restaurant, wait for them to finish their date and bring them back home. Now, I'll tell you how that date is going to play out. Before we talk about how the date is going to play out, let us talk about your daughter coming to meet you and telling you, Mom, I want to go on a date. So your daughter is saying, I want to go on a date with my, my friend, my classmate or, you know. And then the first thing you ask, because you're close with her, that's why she's telling you the truth. Though. Normally, they always, normally, even, even, let me tell you something, even some of the time, most of the time, they may not, the ones that are saying they are going out with their friends, they might not have even planned it to. But sometimes the boys even know what they are doing. Do you understand? Sometimes your own innocent daughter may not even know the whole scene, the whole scenario. That's why you have to be close with these children, these daughters. Now let us, let us see how it plays out. Now your daughter now comes to tell you she's going on a date. She wants to go on a date. You start screaming, but you prefer her to come and tell you, I want to go out with my friends. Whereas the most innocent one and the best one is for her to come and tell you she's going on a date. On a date. When she tells you she's going on a date, a date doesn't mean they are going out. They're just going for a drink. You as a parent will now tell her to tell the boy, tell her to tell her the, boys, um, the boy to tell his family. 
So then you now get the number of the family. Then you now call. I'm not saying they're going to marry. It's not leading. We're not talking about marriage. We're talking about the responsibility of every parent. If your daughter, your son, is bold enough to say you want to take your daughter for a drink, then you must know the parents. You must know where it's coming from. Then you will not call the parents. And perhaps it will not be the both parents that we even arrange the, the, the restaurant that they are going to go to. Are you seeing that you are in every step of your daughter's life, you are there, you are following, you are understanding everything. Whereas you think the other one, we always make that mistake of allowing them to just go with their friends. Mm, they've gone with them, but you don't know what's happening. Oh, where's, when, you, when your husband comes, oh, where's, um, 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 where's your daughter? What, what, what was her name? You know, uh, let, let's call Dumebi. Where's Dumebi? Where's Ada? Oh, she went out with, um, um, Gloria, she went out with this, she went out with that. They all went out there, they're, they're having fun. But you don't know exactly where they're having the fun. But whereas when she comes to meet you and she says, Mommy, I want to go on a date, and you've already called the guy's parents, you already arranged the restaurant where they're going to be, you pack your car jelly in front of that restaurant. jelly you sit and wait until she finishes. Three things will play out. Three things will play out. One, she'll come into the car and tell you, Oh my God, Mom, oh, you're so nice. I think I like him. I think I want to go out again with him. Good. Then you people will be talking, be planning. You know every step of the way. The other scenario that may play out, man, like I don't think I want to even go out anymore. I don't. I don't think I'm even ready for all those things. Um, it's still boring. The third scenario that may play out is she might not even open her mouth to say anything or confide in you. That is where there's a problem. But so, but for you to be able to. Not to have that kind of problem where she comes and not say anything. Go and look at my other videos. That will tell you how to build a relationship with your teenage daughters. Then now let us go to um, those mothers who are very stiff. You cannot go out to see. Let me tell you something. A lot of the time, a one-time pregnancy would have been avoided if... And our kids losing their virginity would have been avoided if we just listened to them. If we just hear them out. Now, I'll give you an example. If your daughter came to meet you and said, she wants to go on a date with so so and so. And your first reaction will be, how dare you? How old are you? Have you forgotten that? She has hormones. Her hormones are playing up in her. The guy that's calling her has hormones. The hormones is playing up in him. So now imagine if you had allowed her to go on that date. And you had arranged everything like you would have done. The initial, the first scenario. And then she would have come back and say, hey, I don't even want to go back. Hey, but because you told her she could not go, if you're not we're talking about those ones that always had always telling the children off. Now we're looking at the second scenario now, a different scenario now. Now this same child now comes to meet you and you say, You're not going anywhere. She will not go behind your back. Unfortunately, because there was no motherly love, there was no motherly guidance, there was no motherly errors, there was nothing. She had gone and she has gone to lose her virginity. She's going to sleep with the guy. What do you get when she sleeps with the guy? Unwanted pregnancy. It takes one, 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 one thing, one time for them to get pregnant, remember. And it takes one time for them to lose their virginity. And you don't even understand, moms. You see these girls, when you call them promiscuous, you call them names, you, 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 they never wanted to do it in the first place. Were you dead? Did you see how she was lured by the boy to do it? Remember, when our girls, when they have, their hormones are playing up, they can't hold themselves. The guys can, when, they, when the, the thing is wingly for the guy, he can't hold himself. And then he use all kind of lies to lure your little daughter. But remember, if you had if you had spoken to her, if you had if you were close to her, if you if you supported her, if you've gone to that restaurant to drop her, would she anything have been able, would anything happen in the restaurant where you'd be in front to pick your daughter and take your daughter back home? No, we don't. We, and then you people, you people want to come and call me out. You should allow. Don't call me out. You should be thinking about. That's why I. I there's this place where you see some lovely, beautiful ladies. They are in their fifties. They do. They don't marry. They don't have children. They say if they had somebody to talk to them like this when they were teenagers, they would be happily married with children, grown children. But look at their lives. I'm not saying their lives were wasted or whatever. Let us, let us establish two things. Perhaps this my video is not for certain people who marriage is not the ultimate goal. But for people who want better for their children, excuse me, who think that as their daughter, they want their daughters to not only when they get good career, good education, ultimate goal, get married. This video is for them. So now let's look at it, right? Now, two things we must establish in the life of our children. As a Christian is Christ first. And then what else? The other ultimate goal is settled life. A good life. A good future. 
a groomed woman, somebody you've groomed, a responsible, happy, fulfilling lady that you're going to groom. And when you groom that, what are you preparing her for? You're preparing her for the future. Good school, good career, and a good husband. And then go into the world and multiply, and for them to be fruitful. That's our prayer for our daughter girls. That's our prayer for our children. That's what we cry every day and go on our knees. Always remember something. When Adam and Eve were put in the garden, they didn't do anything until God said, don't do that. The moment you start telling man or telling our children not to do this, that, and you're not explaining why they should not do it. You start shouting. You're straining the relationship. You're, they don't know who to run to. Let me also tell you something about these people, children you call promiscuous. All these girls that go about sleeping about. It's not because they wanted to do it. Remember the first time they did it? Nobody advised them. And that first time made them feel, feel dirty. And that's why some of you, if your daughter had gone to do it the first time and she came to cry to you, don't tell her, don't curse her. First of all, it was, your, it was because of your behavior she even did it in the first place. Blame yourself, don't blame her. As a mother, I know, I'm not saying, I'm not saying we sometimes we don't do our best and yet they still fall into, into the bad wagons, but I'm saying at least do your best, know that you did your best before they first start falling into that bad wagon. Your child is your child. Groom them. If you groom your child, most of these children that end up getting married, being virgin on their wedding night, are those children that were allowed, that the parents worked, worked with them, loved them, allowed them to go on dates. And most of these ch children that, they, 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 I don't know what, what to use, is because the parents were so hard on them. And then they have children out of wedlock. And then people start laboring them that they're promiscuous. When they need, all they needed from you was a motherly... I know, I know, most of the time our, our problem is we show love by shouting, especially African parents. We show, hey, hey, she wants to date too. Hey, you want to date too? Ah, you, you will start shouting and barking and sh screaming. Will she not date before? Will she not get married one day? Her, does she not have, her, 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 her body her body is developing. That is when you should come and start explaining those developments to her. I remember when our time when we were growing up, when we start seeing our period, our parents would say, hey, when you touch, see a man, you'll get pregnant. You don't even explain that. So when we see a man, we think, we start, when we're under our period, we now start thinking that the only time we can get pregnant is when we're under our period. So when we see men, we start putting our heads that we don't want to look at them because if we do that, when we look at men, we get pregnant. Instead of us to sit down, remember in our, remember in our time, life then was very slow. It was a cake. We didn't know so much. We are living in a digital world. They have all the information thrown and tossed at them. Hormona is playing different routing games in their body. Breast is developing. Bum bum is developing. Everything is developing. They are watching. They are seeing. They are mates. They are mates. Their current body is shaking everything. That is when you should be close to them. Do shopping with them. Buy things for them. And on their prom night, when they are going for a prom, make sure you don't start saying you are going to be the one to pick. 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 Go with them. 50-50, tell, this is how you want the outfit to be. This, then she'll bring her on this. So mommy and daughter, they come together. Voila, you, you produce the outfit. It's going to be made. You tell the tailor what you want. She tells the tailor. And then they mix together to make a wonderful outfit for the. Don't allow, don't leave them. Don't tell them off. Don't send them to their room. Don't block, lock the door. Don't tell them. Don't cause them. Pray, pray for them. I know we are all guilty of this. We are all guilty. We need to, we apologize when you need to be. Don't be, don't be, don't be bogus with your way of doing this. How will I, why won't you apologize to your daughter? Even in your heart, if you search your heart, there are times when you felt that your parents should have apologized to you. So why is, where is all this hardness coming from? This, I know most of, our, most of our parenting skills. The hardness is coming because we are afraid of the future. And we think uh, the only way we can prove. So for some people, it works. It does work when they are so hard on the children, they turn out well. But most often, than not, it doesn't work. They still go behind your back. You want a groomed, well matured. When you when you want a disciplined young lady, you want to be a proud one on the wedding night. That's when your daughter lost her virginity. But even even if she doesn't on that night, but you know that you've groomed your daughter to the best of ability. You know that you've prepared her for the future. You know you've prepared her streetwise, everything wise. You've prepared her. She's wise. So I'm going to say again, if you've not listened to my um, video of teenage, you know, how to groom your teenage daughter, please go and watch that video and understand where I'm coming from. You must, you, you, every step, see, if you're not every, if you're not working with your daughter step by step, they'll be 10 steps ahead of you. You know, some children can get pregnant and go and do abortion outside. You will not know. Do you know that? You won't even know that your child, you still think she's a virgin because all you do is shout and shout and shout and shout and shout and shout. You think that shouting is working. Meanwhile, the girl has done three or four, four, four. Sometimes people, you end up knowing when they die on the, on the, on the aborting table. 
and then you'll be like, oh, oh, how did this happen? No, she must have been raped. Until they now tell you that that is her fourth one that she's doing. All because you were doing stiff, stiff. You can't continue to be stiff like this. You can't continue to... You, you're destroying... You, are you enjoying shouting at them? Time is just going away. Time is just, time is just going and you're fighting with your daughter every time. Shouting, barking. Ah, oh, crazy world. We need to... We need to... See... Children are falling, falling by the wayside too much. Our daughters, especially we, our black daughters, we have to groom our daughters. We have to bring them up the way they should be brought up. And that way is by understanding and taking them everywhere they need to go to. You have to do their shopping for them, buy things. What they, within, within reason, if you don't have, explain to them you don't have. If you have, buy for them. You know the thing that is most amazing is that some mom, because some mom who used to who are glamorous, their daughters would be pick glamorous. They'd be like, why? You're too young. But they, 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 that kind of fashion thing, they got it from you now. You're glamorous. That's why they want to be glamorous now. And some moms who used to be glamorous when they were young, now somehow they're no longer glamorous. When they see their daughters being glamorous, they'd be afraid. Or because of maybe, maybe they done certain things in their time. It doesn't mean because you did certain things in your time, your daughter would. That's why all the more reason why you will not have the hands of things to even groom them even better and protect them and put them in that shell by being by understanding them by speaking to them by doing knowing their every move and to all our teenage daughters out there listen to your mom i know you'll be like she doesn't hear try like hearing me and she's always telling me or she's always fighting i can't speak to her i don't think she she does love you the way we african moms we show our love is by shouting because we are afraid of the future we want to yet what we want for you is the best but in, instead what we are trying to give to you is not actually how we should give it to you but we so on behalf of all parents who are behaving like that, i apologize some of you will say, oh, how will my mom, my mom cannot change. I don't even know. Show her my videos. If you think she will not listen to her, you then do the apologies and, you know, work with mom. Because what your mom is trying to do to, is to better your life. She's not trying to damage your life. Although, in, although sometimes we end up being the opposite, but that's not our intentions. So to all my teenage girls, listen to your mom. They want the best for you. So if a guy wants to take you out, and he's saying, don't tell your parents. Why will a guy want to take you and don't tell your parents? Why will you, why will you be, why will you be, why will you be, why will you be behind closed doors? Why will you agree? Don't agree. Don't agree. But then, once you have a relationship with your mom, tell your mom everything. Let her be your confidant. Not an outsider, but your mom. And moms, focus on our daughters. We're talking about the guys, the, uh, uh, our guy, uh, uh, our boys, uh, our sons soon. In my next video, by God's grace. However, like my video, like I said, um, sh sorry, like my page, follow my page and share my video. Help me share my video. A lot of ch mothers need to hear this video. A lot of mothers need to bring up, a lot we are going through and we, are, we need to train our daughters the way they should be trained. We need to. Please share my video. Thank you. Sorry, it's a long one. Have a blessed day all. Bye.